Last month, Northrop Grumman rolled out its new stealth air-to-air -air combat drone, the Model 437 Vanguard. And while we've known about this secretive drone in development for at least three years now, what shocked the world was that it had a cockpit. Now this aircraft, which was built by Northrop Grumman subsidiary Scaled Composites, made its first flight just a few days ago on August 29th. And this aircraft was designed from its onset to serve in what the US Air Force once called the loyal wingman role. But they've since transitioned to calling these aircraft Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs. Now the whole idea here is to field a large volume of low-cost, high-capability stealth UCAVs that use artificial intelligence to take their cues from a piloted fighter nearby, like the Block 4 F-35 or forthcoming next-generation air dominance fighter. And while Northrop Grumman and Scaled Composite's decision to lead with a piloted version of this aircraft could certainly expedite testing, it may also point toward a seismic shift in the way American tactical aircraft are designed, are purchased, and are operated. So let's talk about the Model 437 Vanguard and what it could mean for the future of American air power. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. All right, before we dive back into the nuts and bolts of the Model 437 Vanguard, I wanna take a very brief moment to say thank you. You see, I've been doing this job for some time now, and over the years, I've been fortunate enough to be nominated for seven or eight awards from prestigious organizations like the Defense Media Awards and the Aerospace Media Awards. Heck, last year, I was even nominated for Aerospace Reporter of the Year, though I didn't win. I have won awards in the past for things like my coverage of the Army's V-280 Valor program and the Air Force's artificial intelligence efforts. And this last week, the Defense Media Awards released their annual list of nominations for their award ceremony that's held in Washington, D.C. each October. And I am extremely proud and grateful to tell you that I found my name on that list for the third year in a row. But this year was different than any other year. You see, in the past, every award nomination and award I've ever won has always been for my written analysis work in digital and print publications. But this year, I was nominated for a video that we published on this very channel. And that's a huge deal for me. This is the first official recognition we've ever received for our video work on this channel. And to be nominated alongside established defense outlets like Breaking Defense and USNI is an honor in and of itself. And while I am extremely grateful to know that this little one-man video production setup I've got going on here is able to compete with those established and respected outlets, I am most grateful for you guys. You're the reason I get to do this every day. You're the reason there's a viable business case for me to present to Sandbox, who owns this channel, that it makes sense for me to spend so much time digging deep into old documents about Cold War aerospace programs and reporting what I find to a camera on my desk. I get to do what I love every day because you guys are willing to share a little bit of your day with me. Whether or not I ultimately get to bring home another trophy to put on my shelf ultimately doesn't matter, though it certainly would make me feel good. What does matter is that you guys make it possible for me to do this job every day. And for that, I will never be able to thank you enough. Now, I'm actually going to be traveling all this week. I'm flying out to D.C. in about 10 hours. I'll be in Salt Lake City later this week. I won't be back to Tennessee until sometime next week, but I don't want to leave you guys without a drop this week. So please bear with me for a fairly informal dive into the Model 437 Vanguard and the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program it may ultimately inform. This week's going to be a little less scripted because I've got one day to put the whole video together. So, without any further ado, let's dive back into the Model 437 Vanguard. As adversary integrated air defense capabilities continue to mature, the U.S. Air Force is facing the real possibility that their stealth fifth generation fighters may not be stealthy enough to survive in the most hotly contested airspaces of latter 21st century conflicts. And the truth is, there's really two different ways to approach solving this sort of combat calculus. 
The first would be to field a new generation of even stealthier aircraft. Platforms that leverage the most advanced stealth design elements, the most advanced material sciences, and even the most advanced propulsion technology, all to ensure that your new generation of fighters are even harder to detect and target than today's stealthiest platforms. Of course, that is a very expensive approach, and it's one the Air Force does seem to be continuing to pursue, even as the NGAD fighter program takes a step back to be reevaluated. The other approach to solving this problem, of course, would be to increase the volume of platforms you send into enemy airspace. This is very much the approach the U.S. took during World War II, where American air power exploded from around 2,500 aircraft when the U.S. entered the conflict to more than 300,000 by the war's end. Now today, the American air power apparatus has dwindled back down to a bit more than 13,000 aircraft. But the U.S. Air Force and Pentagon overall aims to dramatically increase that figure through a wide variety of low to high cost uncrewed platforms, drones of various sorts. Now, many of these drones are being fielded by the Pentagon's broader Replicator Initiative, which aims to field a large volume of mostly single-use or maybe attritable, cheap enough to be replaced easily platforms for a wide variety of airborne missions. But the crown jewel of this effort has to be the Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program and the Skyborg effort that's developing the artificial intelligence that will ultimately pilot these airframes. And that would do a lot for these crews fighters, including extending their sensor reach out as one of those drones flies ahead, increasing their combat capacity by having those drones engage targets on the crewed fighter's behalf, increasing electronic warfare capabilities, and a whole lot more, all while providing a slew of additional targets for adversary air defenses and combat air patrols to have to worry about. And while the Air Force no longer seems quite so sure about the final form their sixth-generation air superiority fighter might take, they seem very confident in the collaborative combat aircraft concept. And there are a whole bunch of firms competing to field these aircraft. In fact, earlier this year, the Air Force awarded Tranche 1 contracts to Anduril for their Fury series of aircraft and to General Atomics for a modified version of their XQ-67A. But Northrop Grumman's Vanguard stands out from the bunch thanks to that cockpit and the ability to carry personnel on board. And recent statements from Northrop Grumman officials sure seem to indicate that the firm sees a future for both crewed and uncrewed iterations of this fighter. Now, this aircraft was designed and tested in a digital environment, much like Northrop Grumman's B-21 Raider that has been making rapid progress through developmental stages and has already entered low-rate initial production. But while the B-21 was the first aircraft slated for service to really see this digital engineering and testing regime, the Vanguard is said to take these concepts to the next level. In fact, according to Northrop Grumman, they were able to reduce the common re-engineering required when you go from a design on a sheet of paper to an actual flyable aircraft that usually sits at around 15 to 20 percent, all the way down to just 1%, meaning there were practically no changes required going from flying this aircraft in their digital testing environment to building this aircraft to actually fly in the real world. And the truth is, there are a bunch of reasons to put a cockpit on a test aircraft, even if you don't intend to have a pilot on board in the long run. First and foremost, it just makes everything about testing a whole lot easier. Not only do you have a qualified test pilot with an engineering background sitting right there in the aircraft to assess how things are going, but you can also speed through things that normally require a great deal of quality assurance testing before you can move on to flight. Things like taxi testing and ensuring that your remote piloting setup can do the things it needs to do, especially if the aircraft were to veer off into restricted airspace or something were to go wrong in flight. Put simply, it's just a lot easier to test an aircraft with a person actually piloting it. But in the long run, this really points toward what is likely to become increasingly common in military aviation. Aircraft that are 
optionally crewed or optionally manned. In fact, the B-21 Raider itself is already expected to be optionally manned. And there are a lot of good reasons for that. Right now, the artificial intelligence we have flying tactical aircraft like the Air Force Research Lab's X-62 and Project Venom's F-16s are very limited in the scope of what they can actually do, but they're very good at doing those limited scope activities. Now, by making these aircraft optionally crewed, it allows you to send that aircraft up without a pilot on board when you want them to conduct those simple sorts of exercises. Or you can stick a pilot in the cockpit and have it conduct much more complex operations. And according to Northrop Grumman's statements back in 2021, they can build these low observable aircraft for as little as just five to six million dollars a copy, provided they have a sizable production contract. Now that is wildly inexpensive for a low observable tactical jet. In fact, that's about the cost of two or maybe three Tomahawk cruise missiles. So you can really see the value proposition in this aircraft. Now Northrop Grumman says this Vanguard technology demonstrator is powered by a single Pratt & Whitney 535 medium thrust non-afterburning turbofan engine. Now that Pratt & Whitney 535 is an engine designed to power business jets, and what makes it unique is an additional low-pressure turbine stage, which is one more row of turbine blades found after the combustion chamber to help the engine convert more of that thermal energy into mechanical energy. And that allows it to turn a larger diameter front fan to produce more thrust more efficiently than other turbofans of its class. Now this engine produces only around 3,400 pounds of thrust, but according to Northrop Grumman, it can accelerate this 41-foot wingspan aircraft all the way up to a speed of around 650 miles per hour, just about Mach 0.85. But even more impressive is its range, which they list as roughly 3,000 nautical miles. That's around 3,452 miles for those of us who aren't pirates. And it can cover all that ground with an internal payload of two AIM-120 AMRAMs or similarly sized weapons. It can likely also carry external stores, but of course that would come at the expense of its stealth profile. Now those dimensions and specs mean the Model 437 Vanguard is about six feet wider, but about 10 feet shorter than the F-30 35A, it would likely be flying alongside. And while that 0.85 Mach top speed might not sound fast enough, that's actually right around the F-35A's cruising speed, meaning this platform could pretty feasibly accompany it deep into contested airspace for all sorts of combat operations. But where the Vanguard really steps up is in range. If Northrop Grumman's claims are to be believed, that means the Vanguard would have more than double the reach of an F-35A. The F-35A's unclassified combat radius is roughly 680 miles, meaning an F-35A taking off from New York City could make it almost all the way to Chicago before it would need to turn around and head back again. The Vanguard, on the other hand, could have a combat radius in excess of 1,500 miles, meaning it could take off from New York City and make it all the way to Denver, Colorado before it would need to turn around and come back. And while we're talking about a jet that may only be flying with, say, two AMRAMs on board, it's also vital that we remember that we're also talking about a low observable UCAB that may come with a sub $10 million price tag. Now, some of the other ways Northrop Grumman has brought down the cost of building these stealth aircraft is through a variety of forms of additive manufacturing, which is corporate speak for 3D printing. And maybe the most important element of this 3D printing apparatus that Northrop is using is the ability to 3D print titanium frame components, which Northrop touts as potentially the first use case for this technology anywhere in the defense sector. Though... I call that into question because I visited Hermes's hypersonic facility just a few years ago and saw them 3D printing titanium frame components for their quarter horse technology demonstrator way back then. But then quarter horse isn't technically a military platform. Dark horse that's meant to come after it will be. So maybe we can give this one to Northrop. Another factor in this cost-saving effort is certainly the fact that the Model 437 Vanguard appears to be in the direct lineage of Scaled Composite's previous Model 401 Sierra. 
Now, the Sierra line included just two prototype aircraft that were fielded back in 2017 for the firm to demonstrate their advanced low-cost manufacturing techniques. This aircraft looks an awful lot like the Vanguard, but is just a little bit smaller at 38 feet long with a 38-foot wingspan. And it weighs in at a bit less with a max takeoff weight of 8,000 pounds versus the Vanguard's 10,000 pounds, which in itself makes a lot of sense seeing as the Vanguard is listed as having a maximum 2,000 pound payload. The other primary difference between these aircraft, of course, is the engine. The Sierra was powered by a smaller Pratt & Whitney JT-15D turbofan, whereas the Vanguard, again, has the more powerful PW-535. Now, this aircraft does have a great deal of testing to do to catch up with other collaborative combat aircraft competitors from the likes of the aforementioned Anduril or General Atomics, but thanks to having a pilot on board, they'll be able to do much of it a whole lot quicker. And Northrop is hoping to secure a contract for the second tranche of CCA drones, which is expected to be awarded in fiscal year 2025. Next year, though importantly, the Air Force has not publicly released much information regarding this second increment of contracts for these CCA aircraft, meaning that while the first increment was very air-to-air -air focused, the second increment may not be. It may instead be air-to-ground focused, electronic warfare focused, or any number of other possibilities. What we do know for sure is that the Air Force intends to purchase at least 1,000 collaborative combat aircraft in the not-too-distant future, with the operating concept of pairing two of these advanced drones to each of a number of forthcoming Block 4 F-35s, next-generation air dominance fighters, potentially even upgraded F-22 Raptors, and more. All told, the Air Force intends to invest around $577.1 million into the collaborative combat aircraft effort in fiscal year 2025, and that figure will balloon up to $8.9 billion by fiscal year 2029 with the total cost for each individual drone expected to ring in at below $30 million. As for the artificial intelligence that will ultimately be piloting these collaborative combat aircraft, that is still progressing under Project Venom for Viper Experimentation Next Gen Operations Mode, which, as we speak, is fielding AI agents and a number of combat-coded F-16s down at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida for ongoing testing. These F-16s will fly with AI agents on board as well as human pilots, with those AI agents first First, learning from the human operators as they fly a variety of air combat exercises until ultimately those AI agents can take over on their own. Of course, in the past, we've not only covered this effort, but also its precursor with the X-62 Vista, a heavily modified Block 30 F-16 that's already been flying air-to-air -air combat exercises against human fighter pilots with a great deal of success. And if everything goes according to the Air Force's plan, they will already have hundreds of these combat-capable, low-observable, low-cost UCAVs in the sky before the first production-ready version of America's stealth fighter could even make it off the assembly line. And one has to wonder if that might potentially be playing a role in the Air Force's newfound cold feet regarding that next-generation air dominance, sixth-generation air superiority fighter. You know aside from their struggle to pay for it with the LGM-35 Sentinel ICBM program going so far over budget. And that'll just about do it for the Model 437 Vanguard, the CCA program, and this edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, one more time, thanks guys.